What's going on, all you fantastic freelancers? William here with another Your Anthem interview featuring the freelancer of freelancers, Mr. Lazare, aka Laz with Lazare's Digital Art. Laz, how are you doing today, my friend? Thank you, William. I'm great. Thanks for having me on the show. Thrilled to have you with us, Laz. And before you all go anywhere, there are some exclusives at the end that you're not going to want to miss. But before we get into the art, Laz, tell me a little bit about yourself. I am Lazare. Um, I'm a digital artist from the country of Georgia, the one that's in Eastern Europe actually gets confused with the US state a lot. So I'm a self-taught artist mostly, and I'm actually doing it part-time. I also work in uh, digital marketing, and I do love me some video games, as you may have all noticed, <laughs> especially, you know, ones that put emphasis on story and character progression, open world gameplay, that sort of thing. So Bioware games in particular, right? Because I noticed some of your first stuff was massive. Mass Effect. So what's your favorite Bioware series and why? Well, it's Mass Effect. <laughs> it's <laughs> like <laughs> right there. It's not complicated to figure it out. Yeah, Mass Effect was the first Bioware game I played uh, back in 2007 and it remains the most uh, notable experience I've had in a video game. Uh, it's probably my favorite Bioware series and favorite game series in general. I'm personally still waiting for an RPG that will deliver the same sort of magic and investment to story that the first First one did. I mean, there have been a lot of technically superior games since the trilogy for sure, but none with the magic, I think. I imagine this is both confusing to articulate and painfully familiar to any diehard Mass Effect fan. Oh, absolutely. So I gotta ask, what's your personal javelin preference and do you have a specific playstyle for these type of games? Uh, I do like, uh, you know, visually the Ranger a lot, as I do the Interceptor, but we know nothing about the Interceptor, so it's difficult to say. I'm one of those people who have these boring, balanced builds in RPGs, so I'm just gonna be that guy that plays all of them and just never really gets a favorite until I'm well within the game. But you know, I'm excited. I like how the Ranger feels in gameplay. I like the sort of Iron Man fantasy it brings, and the Storm, it harkens back to Mass Effect Andromeda, I feel like. It, I feel like it sort of develops that gameplay style. So I'm excited for all of them. That's my answer. <laughs> So when did you realize you wanted to be an artist? I mean, I know, I think I was reading that you just picked up an iPad one day and just started doodling, but when did you decide you wanted to be an artist? That is absolutely correct. Well, if we go back further, uh, I honestly have been drawing since I could hold a pen, but yeah, I really went hard for really? it. Yeah, yeah, I was uh, the kid in class who doodled all the time. I used to draw robots, dinosaurs, but never really went anywhere serious, including career and education-wise. I don't have a background in art. I'm completely self-taught because back in 2010 I believe or 2011 I picked up an iPad I realized I could draw on it uh, it was sort of the cheaper back then it was a cheaper alternative to all the you know nuclear powered Wacom tablets and whatnot also the tech itself mobile art really took off the moment I sort of joined it in so I, I got really lucky because now I have a, an iPad Pro and I'm really happy with the you know with the things it allows me to do I am not getting paid by Apple to say this these things, by the way. I should make that clear. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, no, you caught us. Your Anthem episode sponsored by Apple. Oh, so no. <laughs> when did you start creating video game art? Uh, was it Mass Effect? Was that the first one? Or was there uh, another one in particular that you started? I don't really remember what I started with, but what I can say is that nothing really inspires me as much as video games. Because I've been a believer in the, you know, the storytelling power of interactive mediums since, you know, forever. So when I, when I fall in love with a game, I, I fall in love hard like harder than novel or a movie or anything else so it all goes you know kind of downhill from there in terms of what I do because when a game hooks me I kind of start you're stuck with it for a long time. Yeah, yeah, I'm stuck with it with a long time and it creates sort of this feedback loop where I have to keep creating to get the excitement out of me somehow. So, I yeah, don't think I, the Anthem community is complaining. I know I'm not <laughs> complaining. So that kind of answers the inspiration for your artwork. Do you have any specific uh, style or artist you model your stuff off of? Or is it your, completely your own? Uh, no, no, I'm definitely... I definitely like to say that I'm standing on the shoulders of giants. I say this all the time because currently, to me, uh, where I am with my art is I'm basically a Frankenstein, a hodgepodge of all the different idols and heroes I have in the industry. I dabble mostly, you may have noticed, it's sort of like poster art, alternative poster art. That's the direction I took kind of early on because I find the medium compelling. And I also joined up a couple of online communities in the field, uh, you know, went looking 
looking for my voice by sort of deconstructing and understanding the styles and techniques of some of my heroes. I talk a lot about being inspired by the likes of Matt Ferguson. I also love the work of, you know, Dan Mumford, Drew Struzan, Ali Zhang, like Ali Moss, all these contemporaries and, you know, classic poster artists alike. So what I like to do is sort of look at their work, cherry pick what I think I understand how they achieved, and then sort of try and um, introduce it into my workflow. I work in vectors uh, primarily, so uh, that's where I try to sort of coalesce and experiment with all those inspirations and, you know, see what sticks and what doesn't. Your stuff is just absolutely top-notch. There's nothing else like it. And I want to talk a little bit about your style. The propaganda art is probably where I first found you. It was... <sighs> I can't remember which piece it was of the anthem art uh, with the propaganda that hooked me. It may have been your four series on the Storm, the Ranger, the Colossus, and the Interceptor. I actually started those with the Interceptor uh, because I kind of was throwing colors around, pushing shapes around, thinking about the world, and it kind of received such a positive reception, and immediately people were like, well, when are the others coming? Uh, give us the Colossus, give us the Storm, and I was like, okay, this is going to turn into a thing now, and it did. The propaganda is top-notch, though, and then you made the General Helena Tarsus one, uh, which was in a thumbnail for one of my videos. That was absolutely fantastic. Where did you get the inspiration for or Helena Tarsus. I'm not surprised if Bioware's like, ooh, maybe we should uh, make a skin based off of this design. I like to kind of hook myself into little tidbits of lore and imagine where they go. So I wanted to imagine the situation where Helena is maybe considered the hero in Tarsus, right? Maybe used in propaganda, used for getting more recruits, whatever. I looked at the, you know, the pre-order page. I saw, I tried to get that image in high resolution so I could see the armor, uh, get a sense of it, get, uh, get an idea on how to reference it but I mostly sort of allowed the design to take its own uh, road its own language especially in terms of color it's similar but it's a little bit a little bit of my original thinking mixed up in there yeah one of the art pieces I'm definitely hiring you for uh, and it'll be another your anthem exclusive for a little while uh, before it's released on your Twitter and everything else I want to give my guys uh, like a two-week uh, head start before everyone else though I want to do a Legion of Dawn like all four four of the Legion. I don't know if it's going to be propaganda or just a landscape piece, but something similar, if you're down for that. That sounds great. I mean, as, as long as uh, we manage to get some good enough references for it, I, I love working with this kind of larger than life heroic figures in Bioware canon and stuff. So yeah, yeah, sure, man, let's do it. Let's do it. I'm and, excited now. Yeah, and one other piece that I'm really digging that you do are the silhouette. The most recent one was the Legion of Dawn Interceptor, which was fantastic. Thank you, man, thank you. I also love the Storm silhouette. I mean, I bought the the long sleeve t-shirt from your shop. By the way, the link to uh, Laz's shop will be in the description below. And so many people have ordered, I think the most ordered one is your silhouettes. Uh, people are getting the silhouette mug, the silhouette shirts, and so on and so forth. Tell me about the silhouettes. What inspired you to do those? Because they're so different from the propaganda pieces. Like I said, I like to incorporate a lot of different styles and sort of explore a lot of different avenues. That specifically was born from the marriage of my love for limited palettes. I often like to draw things by limiting myself in the amount of colors I use. And also, I'm a huge fan of Oli Moss, who has done posters very similar to the ones that I did for Anthem. I sort of looked at those. I looked at some other artists I admire in the poster field, but the idea itself, it, it's not that new or original, you know, like drawing inside a silhouette. I just thought that it would look and feel fresh in context of Anthem, because you have these four sort of iconic sets of armor and you have this world which may or may not be, you know, super varied and environmentally different uh, from, you know, gameplay moment to gameplay moment. So I kind of wanted to capture that a little bit, not too much. Uh, with the silhouettes, I was trying to play with shapes and suggestions more than specific uh, sort of visuals. You've got the propaganda style, which is possibly the one you're best known for, and you've got the silhouettes, which is some of your most popular stuff. Do you have any other styles you're thinking about experimenting with in the future, or do I need to shut my mouth now, and, or is that hush-hush, or, or what, are, what are we looking at? 
No, man, it's not hush hush. I, I, I just don't have anything specific that I can call a style. Like I said, I'm still finding my voice, still trying to see what sticks, you know, imitate the greats, like I said. Sometimes I end up coalescing something, but mostly it's always trying to jump around. And that's also another thing with me because the moment I start feeling like I'm getting too comfortable in something, like the propaganda pieces, right? Because it was the same color palette, same types of shapes. So I just had to shift gears like very, you know, drastically and rapidly. I think it's good for any artist to do that. I gotta ask you, what are you looking forward to the most in Anthem? Oh man, I have a weird answer for this. <laughs> okay. So, uh, okay, so my personal stake in Anthem, uh, and this goes beyond the story and the Bioware element of it, which I am excited for, but... This I gotta hear. Listen, listen, there was this video game, you may have heard of it. It came out in 2009 or 10. It was called Dark Void. For the love of me, I can't remember the developer, but uh, so Dark Void was this, first of all, absolute critical and commercial train wreck, right? It was not a good game, objectively. But it had these pretty ambitious gameplay mechanics that I genuinely enjoyed. It was uh, a third-person cover shooter with a twist uh, in that your character sported a jetpack and could, you know, take to the skies at the press of a button. It had full-fledged flight mechanics, you know, you could do barrel rolls, fly around. The maps were very large scale, you know, verticality was there, huge boss fights were there. It would sometimes even remind me of uh, Shadow of the Colossus. So it had this very good concept, like very good concept that I had fun with, but it was just marred by bad execution and when that game bombed, I, I, I was so sad because I knew that type of ga gameplay would not be explored anymore. So right. fast forward to 2017 and Anthem's gameplay debut happens and I'm basically, you know, jumping up and down the couch yelling, this is like Dark Void, but better. And from Bioware, like... <laughs> from like Bioware, perfect... it's gonna have story, it's gonna have bad It's gonna, ha it's oh gonna be actually good, and they did not forget <laughs> about this type of gameplay. It's, it's, it's like a perfect storm for me, because... Uh, the whole, you know, flying stuff married with third-person shooting, it's its something I sort of believe in from a gameplay standpoint. It's, it's capable of carrying a game. So I'm excited of playing that and seeing how that feels. That's really exciting to me. And also, you know, it's a Bioware game, there's story and there's character. I mean, that's going to be great. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but that, that goes without saying. So yeah. th that's awesome. And now this is the moment uh, most people have been waiting for is the exclusive Ooh. so yeah yeah so you were kind enough to put together a little collage for the first piece so up first is the silhouette uh grouping it looks incredible uh i, I love the collage with the uh, legion of dawn interceptor at the forefront and then you got the other guys spanning off to the sides that's absolutely incredible very well done my friend yeah, we have a little, you know, an, an Avenger situation going on, maybe. Oh my god. I, I just wanted to... Yeah, man, I, I, I like how they look together. Like I said, I find it compelling that these limited palettes can sort of complement each other. And also you have the characters, the iconic four javelins flanking the original founder. Sort of think it looks nice. Oh, they look great. They look uh, fantastic. I've used them for emojis on the server. Yeah, uh, that was great, by the way. <laughs> oh, well, I'm, I'm glad you enjoyed it. And now this is the exclusive first time anyone ever is getting to see this. We have the Know Your Enemy Scars propaganda poster. So tell me a little bit about this little inspiration, your whole spiel on it. I partially credit the fandom for this because after I did my initial propaganda posters, I started getting a lot of requests to like do the bad guys and do the Ash Titan and the Dominion and the Scars and sort of I decided to, okay, let's do all of those things, but let's sort of frame it in another, maybe like a PSA from Fort Tarsus about what uh, freelancers can expect outside of the fort, right? So I decided I came up with this know your enemy framework for the posters and the first one I did was a little moment of reflection maybe. I drew this and I, honest to God, marked it as a Dominion guy and William here pointed mm -hmm. that out to me so I had to very hastily <laughs> rework it into, <laughs> yeah, I had to like add scars, threaten the anthem at the bottom. 
To your credit, I 100% believed this was uh, a Dominion suit. Uh, I thought it was kind of weird. Usually, yeah, I just, Dominion, I just didn't know. Uh, yeah, yeah. You'd think it like black and gold and whatever, and I thought, okay, so this is cyan bluish. All right, sure, sure. The Dominion's now cyan blue, whatever. So I went on the Wikipedia to make sure uh, that I wasn't crazy or whatever. Uh, Google the scars, and it had all the scar variants, and it said Scout. Said okay, and so then this that is a screenshot scar scout. with the scout. Mm. Uh, don't tell me this is the same guy. Click on it, blew it up. Damn, that's a scout. Damn. All right, well, whatever. That that takes off a huge load off of my uh, <laughs> my anthem lore discussion of the Dominion. Can't make any speculation <laughs> out of it. We were talking about it before this video. I've, I'll never make a lore video on something as small as, Hey, what's going on, all you fantastic freelancers? This is the, the Dominion. They, they, uh, they're they they militaristic. They have a dictatorship. Bye, everyone. All right, thanks That's for it. watching. Be sure to click that <laughs> like and subscribe. <laughs> I'll never do that. Uh, so I, I'm glad that you made this, though. It is fantastic. Thank and you. uh, you've been working on the Dominion uh, propaganda poster. I'm not going to share it here. You're going to have to look in the Discord server. It's 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 a very pre pre alpha version though, so take right. it with a grain of salt. I may change things around, add some details. But yeah, I'm planning on making the Know Your Enemy series into, you know, a number of posters. I want to cover the Dominion, the Scars, maybe the Wildlife. I want to devote one to the Ash Titan. And, you know, if we get something else, I've heard there are some spiky dogs and stuff. Absolutely. And, you know, we've got Gamescom coming Yeah. Out. And uh, this month is going to be chock-a-block. I mean, of course, PAX West, oh, the God. panel on the Anthem story isn't going to be until September 1st. But yeah, we're going to have so much stuff back-to-back, -back, which means, hey, <laughs> take my uh -huh. money. You need to do some stuff. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm ready. I'm ready, man. Because like I said, this game is freaking compelling. So anytime they drop an information, you know, dump on us, I'm going to be right there. Turn it into something. <laughs> and guys, Laz is taking commissions. However, you're backed up to how, how long? Are you backed up for now? Pretty much till the end of October by now, yeah. Jeez. Unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, boo! <laughs> Unfortunately, I, I'm not kidding. That's Lad. terrible for yeah, me. I, I'm, this is golly, a tragedy. That just sucks, man. <laughs> no, but your art is fantastic. It, uh, I I credit you and Mark Dara the most for uh, keeping the. Oh, me and Mark Dara in the same thing. sentence. Yeah, absolutely, oh. King Dara, you guys fan the flames, keeping the anthem interest and intrigue in the community alive and going. You guys are awesome. Can't thank you enough for all your hard work. Well, speaking for myself and Mark, thank you very much. <laughs> yeah, you and Mark Dara are right up there. I mean, Mark Dara is just like slightly above a you because of all bit. the tweets he has just to answer over bit. and over yeah. and over again. I, hey, I can talk about damage numbers it's, all it's day, It's like man. a hair. I, I, I know how those work. Oh, yeah. Hey, by the way, can Damage you turn numbers? those things off? I, I gotta check in with the dev team. No one has asked that before. This is completely new to me. And how many pre-order editions are there going to be? You haven't covered that yet. But anyways, Laz, it has been a time and a half finally getting to talk to you. Thank you so much for coming on to Your Anthem and being such a huge supporter of Your Anthem. And when I say you are the freelancer of freelancers, I mean, that is a title you're going to have for life. Put that on your Twitter. Put that wherever you need to. You are the original freelancer, my friend. Thank you so much for everything you do. I'm gonna have to live with it. Thank you too, man. I, I, I honestly can't speak the same for you because the quality of your videos and the, the quality of interaction you display towards community, it's admirable. So props to you. Laz, thank you so much for being on. Do you have any last words before we go? Oh man, I, I should have prepared something. I guess, um, march on freelancers. <laughs> <laughs> Freelancers, it's time, time to, get to get to work. work. <laughs> I like how he says that. Yeah, have a good one, buddy. Everyone, be sure to go check out the Discord server where you can chat with Laz and me, and you can see all the exclusives, all the goodies. You can get that 4K download for the Scar Propaganda poster before Laz posts it on his Twitter. I hope you all have a phenomenal day, my freelancer friends, and I'm looking forward to seeing you all in the next one. Peace out, everyone.